So people in this video let us look at uh, the diagnosis of trachoma. We will look at the clinical diagnosis, the lab diagnosis and the differential diagnosis. So just a very quick recap, we have seen trachoma means uh, what it is, uh, in Greek actually it means rough, basically it is a conjunctivitis caused by chlamydia bacteria, that is specifically to say it is caused by chlam uh, chlamydia trachomatis, it causes hyperendemic blinding trachoma, okay. So basically the transmission is from eye to eye, earlier it was called, called Egyptian ophthalmia, right, it is nothing but chronic keratoconjunctivitis, so both the uh, cornea and the conjunctiva are involved here okay so basically it is a leading cause of preventable blindness in the world so basically what you should know here how it spreads directly it spreads by vectors also by material transfer like towel handkerchief etc basically the clinical features we have seen uh, there will be follicles like this right there will be um, uh, that is called as boiled sago grain appearance okay so basically you have seen the conjunctival signs, you will see uh, the conjunctival follicles, right? You will see follicles and if there are follicles in the bulbar conjunctiva, that will be very specific of trachoma. In the follicle, in the center, there can be leber cells and there can be necrosis, okay? So there will be even papillae also, okay? So here what is affected? Usually the tarsal conjunctiva and the conjunctival fornix is affected. Bulbar conjunctiva, if it is involved, then it is very specific of trachoma. And then we saw um, the active trachoma, the corneal signs. Corneal signs were something like Herbert's follicles, right? Well, basically, Herbert's follicles, later they become Herbert pits in the regressive trachoma, okay? So, here you will have progressive uh, panis in the active trachoma. There you will have the regressive panis, okay? Here you will have corneal ulcer, superficial keratitis also. So, all these are active trachoma signs. Then you saw the... Clinical features of uh, trachoma, if it is the cicatricial trachoma, there you saw what and all. If it is in the face of cicatricial trachoma, in conjunctiva, what will you see? You will see arts line, so, right? You will see arts line like this. Arts line you will see, right? Then you will see concertions, concretions, concretions. What is it called? What do you think? Concretion or concertion? concretion okay then uh, what else what else you saw in corneal sign you saw herbert spits right then you'll see regressive panis corneal opacity then lid lid will show trichiasis entropion tylosis ptosis medarosis ankylo blepharon okay so lacrimal apparatus also you will see dacro dacryo dacryocystitis and dacryo adenitis then we saw the who classification follicular intense scarring trichiasis opacity corneal opacity the five who classification then uh, complications we saw corneal ulcer is a complication okay now diagnosis we have come to the actual topic of this uh, video diagnosis so trachoma diagnosis clinical diagnosis so we have already kind of looked at this, right? Basically, the typical signs we told you, the conjunctival signs, the corneal signs, the symptoms, right? Everything we have already told you. So remember the symptoms. Symptoms we didn't revise. Mild you know, foreign body sensation, slight discharge and all that, right? Remember this. Mild foreign body sensation, occasional lacrimation, slight stickiness of the lids, scanty mucoid discharge. These are the symptoms, right? So, all these clinical stuff we have seen actually. So, now let us look at the lab diagnosis. Okay. So, clinical diagnosis you have seen and also you have seen the WH classification. Now, let us look at the lab diagnosis. So, lab diagnosis basically you have conjunctival cytology, detection of the inclusion bodies. You have heard of the inclusion bodies already, right? Then you have the enzyme linked immunosorbent acid that is ELISA. So, inclusion bodies, let's just search where exactly we looked at the inclusion bodies. Somewhere in the beginning itself, we spoke, when we spoke about uh, chlamydia trachomatis, we said the specific inclusion bodies, intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies called HP bodies, Halber, Steder, Provazac bodies, right? Okay. Then what is the third part of the lab diagnosis test? The third part is ELISA, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So, conjunctival cytology. What will you look at here? You will look for 
plasma cells, liver cells, right? You already know that liver cell is very typical of trachoma. Liver cells, plasma cells, right? Polymorphonuclear reaction means what? Nucle uh, neutrophils. So basically, you will see gymsa stained smears showing predominantly polymorphonuclear reaction. So basically, as this is a bacterial infection, definitely you should be seeing a lot of neutrophils. Here they are calling it as polymorphonuclear reaction. Okay. With the presence of plasma cells and leber cells. So basically, what stain are they using here? Gymsa. Gymsa stain. Okay. Then coming to the detection of inclusion bodies. Guys, we are done with the first part of uh, lab diagnosis, right? We are done with the first part of lab diagnosis, that is conjunctival cytology. Now, let us move on to uh, the second one, that is detection of inclusion bodies. So, in uh, inclusion bodies detection, again, they will be using gymsa stain. You can also use iodine stain and immunofluorescent stain, okay? So, in uh, cases with active trachoma, they are saying you can use this to detect the inclusion bodies in conjunctival smear. In which one? Again, here it is conjunctival smear. What stain are they using? G-I-E-M-S-A, gymsa stain, iodine stain or immunofluorescent stain, right? You will use and you can detect the inclusion bodies, okay? In active trachoma especially. Active trachoma especially. So, guys, is this clear? Detection of inclusion bodies. So, inclusion uh, bodies are what? HP bodies, right? So, guys, uh, pay attention here. We are done with the second uh, lab diagnosis. Now, we are moving on to the third one, ELISA enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. Okay. So, basically, what will you detect here? You will detect the antigens, chlamydial antigens. Okay. Guys, so actually, there are still many uh, lab diagnoses. We PCR. Isolation of the bacteria, that is chlamydia here. Then you also have serotyping of TRIC agents. What are these? Let us look at that. First of all, PCR, polymerase chain reaction. You heard a lot of about, a lot about it, right? You will go to the DNA level or the genetic material level. Then isolation of chlamydia. It is possible in yolk sac inoculation method. So you remember in yolk sac of the egg, right? So, if you remember, yolk sac of egg, guys, we had mentioned that in the yolk sac, <clears throat> we can grow bacteria like chlamydia, rickettsia, Japanese encephalitis, and encephalitis virus also can be grown, right? So, if you remember from microbiology, we have already seen this information. So, <clears throat> you can isolate the chlamydia bacteria where in the yolk sac, right? That was the isolation of chlamydia. So, you can also use tissue culture. And standard single passage McCoy cell culture, which also requires three days. Okay. So, what and all are they talking about here? Yolk sac, right? Yolk sac, then tissue culture, then standard single passage McCoy cell culture. This requires at least three days. Okay. So, pay attention guys. This is how it looks. McCoy's media for chlamydia, right? So, this requires at least three days though. Then, let us move to serotyping of TRIC agents. So, serotyping of TRIC agents, uh, what is TRIC first of all? So, here what TRIC means, trachoma and inclusion conjunctivitis. So, basically if you remember, in the beginning we have covered what chlamydia causes, right? Like this chart. So, you have seen in this that chlamydia trachomatis causes trachoma and it also, uh, some serotypes cause trachoma. The other serotypes of chlamydia trachomatis causes paratrachoma or adult inclusion conjunction, conjunctivitis, right? So, they are telling trachoma and inclusion conjunctivitis, TRIC, okay. Shall we go back there now to the lab diagnosis? Okay, here. Okay. So, basically, serotyping of these agents. So, do you know the serotypes? ABC causes trachoma. What causes uh, 
inclusion conjunctivitis guys that that was d2k serotypes d2k right so we remember trachoma as abc and d2k was paratrachoma or adult inclusion conjunctivitis so serotype basically they are trying to detect right so serotyping of tric agents is done by what detecting specific antibodies using microimmunofluorescence micro if method have you ever heard of microimmunofluorescence first time i am hearing microimmunofluorescence micro immuno fluorescence right microimmunofluorescence it's called as micro if method okay what will you detect detect specific antibodies it is under this only they are saying detect specific antibodies okay direct monoclonal fluorescent antibody microscopy of conjunctival smear conjunctival smear is rapid and inexpensive so they are saying direct monoclo monoclonal fluorescent antibody microscopy of conjunctival smear is rapid and inexpensive so guys if you have paid attention here we are done with the lab diagnosis now we have to move to the drift differential diagnosis of trachoma right so let us look at the differential guys we are here we are trying to look at the differential diagnosis of trachoma okay let's pick up the differential diagnosis in a new slide okay so let's look at the differential diagnosis here so basically there can be two types right trachoma with follicular hypertrophy and then you have trachoma with predominantly papillary hypertrophy okay so you have two types of trachoma here so follicular is here and here they are talking about papillary hypertrophy so if it is follicular so it is possible that you can get confused between this one and acute adenoviral follicular conjunctivitis because there also there will be follicles so you can confuse it with acute adenoviral follicular conjunctivitis or epidemic keratoconjunctivitis okay so how will you differentiate so basically in trachoma what happens the follicles are mainly the follicles will be mainly in the upper palpebral conjunctiva as you can see here it is mainly in the upper palpebral conjunctiva as we have already told you at the beginning of this video usually the upper palpebral conjunctiva and the fornix right are usually affected right usually these are affected so in uh, you can see in the follicles the follicles will be more where in the upper palpebral conjunctiva and the upper fornix okay so that is a distinguishing feature whereas in ekc that is epidemic keratoconjunctivitis the lower palpebral conjunctiva is more involved and the lower fornix are more involved in the ekc okay so that's not at all difficult right so did you understand in trachoma what is involved the upper upper uh, palpebral conjunctiva and the upper fornix are usually involved and in the ekc that is epidemic keratoconjunctivitis which is caused due to adenovirus in that the lower palpebral conjunctiva and the lower fornix are predominantly involved okay so that is information for you so where will you see papillae and panis associated signs like papillae and panis are more in trachoma then if you can't do if you cannot at all distinguish then what will you do you just send it for lab diagnosis lab diagnosis will detect and tell you whether it is a bacteria or a virus as simple as that so you can identify the organism right okay so now we are done with the follicular hypertrophy now let us look at the differential for trachoma with predominant papillary hypertrophy so let us look at this trachoma with predominant papillary hypertrophy okay so this one you can get confused uh, by uh, with spring catara you know spring catara that is that uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis hope you have seen the video so this is a allergic conjunctivitis the vernal keratoconjunctivitis so it looks very much like trachoma right but let us look at the differences between trachoma and uh, vernal keratoconjunctivitis okay so here you are trying to distinguish trachoma with pa predominant papillary hypertrophy 
and VKC, which is nothing but, it's also called as spring ketera, right? In uh, spring ketera, you have cobblestone appearance. Remember of the papillae. Remember that. Let's open that and show. In uh, spring ketera, how it will be. Cobblestone appearance, right? You remember this? Cobblestone appearance, guys. Cobblestone or pavement stone appearance in spring ketera. So, here you will say cobblestone appearance in spring ketera. Now, pH of the tears is usually acidic in trachoma and in uh, allergic it will be alkaline. Okay. Alkaline tears. Okay. Then, so remember here acidic tears in trachoma. Discharge is ropey in spring ketara. Ropey discharge in spring ketara. Follicles and panis uh, are present in trachoma. These are some additional things and right? associated. Follicles and panis may also be present in trachoma. Conjunctival cytology will help distinguish the case. Obviously, you can detect organism. Lab diagnosis. Lab diagnosis will show organism. You can detect the organism in lab diagnosis, right? Okay. So, are you done guys? So, shall we move on now? In the next video, we will look at the treatment of trachoma, management treatment of trachoma, okay? So, in the next video, let us look at the management of trachoma, okay? What safe strategies, etc. we will look at in the next video. For now, that's all. Bye-bye. Thank you.